Hi everyone, it's Carl again from selfsufficienthub.com and today we're going to be taking a walk just to have a look at what wild edibles are available. It's currently very, very early March, so everything we have a look at today is available very early spring and late winter. So just to show you that even though the vegetables in your garden might not be ready yet, there's still a lot out there that can be found. So let's see what we find. Okay, and the first thing we found is common sorrel. Now, common sorrel is a really great, great edible. One of the reasons being it's got a citrusy um, flavor, which is quite difficult to come by in any sort of temperate climate. It's very difficult to come across um, plants that give you that citrus flavor. So even on the homestead, we use it all the time as a substitute for um, that lemon flavor and things. It is great in salads. It's got, um, so when I say a citrus flavor, think of it as like a cross between um, a very mild lemon um, and a sort of apple peel without that sort of chewiness. It's, it really is delicious. I love it. In salads, it's great. And anything if you want to add that sort of citrusy zing to something. So here's one I haven't chewed. And one of the key identifiers are those two pointy ears down at the bottom. I believe another name for it is sheep's ears or, or something of that nature. And you can see why. Some angles it's supposed to look like a sheep's head with ears pointing up I guess. Each stem will just have the one leaf on it. There are a couple of poisonous lookalikes which you should be aware of. One would be garden escapees of arum lilies um, so do your research on those and the second one is something called lords and ladies which is a very toxic plant and it's responsible for most of the the poisonings from this forages of plants of this nature so um, there are some lords and ladies just up the way back to the car so i'll stop and show you those and uh, they've got a really easy key identifier that will um, make it so you, it's easy for you to tell them apart they are prolific these grow everywhere on the edges of woodland grassland you've almost certainly got some of these growing very near you right now even in lawns so common sorrel a great wild edible Use it in salads soups um, anything you like now, here behind me, we've got a patch of Lords and Ladies, and um, it's an incredibly common plant. And as you can see, it does share some of the, the same features as the, um, the common sorrel we were looking at earlier. It's got those two ears, and of course, the, the leaves don't start this size. Um, but when they're smaller, they tend to be curled up towards the bottom but that's not really useful to know because as you can see they've still got that those two arrows or the arrow shaped bottom but the key identifier for this one if you look closely they've got a margin so around the outside of the, the leaf around the outside of the leaf you see you've got that vein that runs along the edge and it separates the the very edge of the leaf by a margin like you'd have on a piece of paper that's one of the best tricks for identifying this plant but once you've familiarized yourself with them it becomes very 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 easy to tell them apart and, and lords of ladies because they're so ubiquitous they're so common they're one you're going to be able to to tell within no time of uh, finding your first few and I'm not sure how easy it is to pick up those those margins on the camera um, but you can see it's a bit clearer on this bigger specimen or at least I hope it is so there you go that's the poisonous lords and ladies definitely one to be avoided and a very very common one to cause mistakes just a little bit further on we've come across all this wild garlic this is one of my absolute favorite wild edibles um, it might even be my favorite it's so versatile the leaves you can eat just as they are um, it's really easy to identify just from the color and the smell chances are you'll smell this just as soon as you see it it, it smells of garlic and that's one of the key identifiers so the leaves look like this later on in the year they'll have little white flowers they look gorgeous but if you're in any doubt at all just tear a little bit of a leaf and and it really does just smell of garlic I enjoy them as they are it's a really mild garlicky flavor in the leaf 
and you can eat the whole plant. They come out the ground fairly easily and they've got a bulb, which is again, tastes just like garlic, but a bit milder. The leaves will grow much bigger than these. One of the things I love to do, wrap fish in the leaves of the garlic and cook them in the oven. And it, it does two things. It infuses the, the fish with that garlic flavor, but also it steams the fish. It keeps the moisture inside if you've done it right. Now, just a word of advice. If you're on public land, it's actually against the law to uproot plants as I've done here. Now, personally, I don't have a lot to say ethically about it because, I mean, as you can see, it is pretty much a beast. If it's somewhere it's happy, it will spread and it will grow fine, just like a weed. So, um, you know, I don't have an opinion on it one way or another. I would use all the usual foraging um, rules that you would apply to, for sustainability and, and uh, protecting the ecology of the area and everything else. But, um, you know, I'll leave it up to you to use your judgment. I actually have permission on this piece of land, but there you go, wild garlic. Usually it would come out around February in my area. It's actually early, it's been very early this year, so it was out not, not long after Christmas. One of my absolute favorite wild edibles, you can eat every part of the plant, wild garlic. So we've wandered into a stand of coniferous trees and among them is some pine. Now pine needles make a good tea. There's actually several things that the, the pine tree is, is great for. Um, so we'll start with the needles. Um, the needles, you, you literally make it make it into a tea, um, just like you would with regular tea. So you either cut them up or sort of snap them a bit so that the, uh, the flavoring that's in them can come out. And then you put them in the tea, simmer it, and uh, drink the liquid. Another so thing, obviously, is pine nuts. Now that's not this time of year, but that's within the pine cones. How you identify pine is by looking at the needles quite closely. They grow in pairs. Each of these needles will be part of a pair. So if I bend these down out of the way, you'll see there's two distinct pairs there. There are some toxic look-alikes, if you like. They're not really look-alikes, the yew tree. Um, once you start looking for things like this, like the two needles growing together, you'll soon see that they don't look anything alike. The yew tree, they grow in almost like two blades. You'll have a blade going out one side of the, the stem with pines on, with needles on, and then a blade growing out the opposite side with needles on down the two sides. Whereas here, they just grow in like a bush all around the end and in pairs, that's the important thing. Another thing you get from the pine tree is resin. Anywhere the tree's been wounded, you'll have this resin in it. It's actually reasonably easy to harvest. I'm not a big fan, personally, but people do use it a bit like chewing gum, apparently, and it does have a menthol flavor very much. Definitely worth trying, for sure, if you've not tried it before. Um, there are also, obviously, some other bushcraft uses for it, but that's not what we're doing here. Yeah, another one that's very, very common and always available, or almost always, are cleavers. Um, you probably know them. They're what you used to throw at your brother or sister when you were a kid, and they'd stick. So, sticky weed, sticky willy, um, cleavers, but they're actually a quite pleasant salad. Um, when they're very, very young like this, mixed in with a salad, they uh, are not at all unpleasant. You can also cook them, but they're just available almost all the time. I think the only time I've ever not been able to find them is when there's been a foot of snow. So go for the, the young shoots. So this is actually a good time to have them. When they get a bit older, they're less pleasant. But the young tips are actually quite nice. I wouldn't go so far as to say they're my favorite salad, but they're quite inoffensive. I've had to abort. <clears throat> it started raining quite heavily and while it doesn't bother me, it makes filming quite tricky with my camera, so, or with my phone. So I've got a couple of really short clips coming up of uh, chickweed I found um, two days ago. I'm gonna add them to the end of this video simply because I've been cut short by the weather. And don't worry, I'm not driving on a public road. This is just a track. If you find these videos valuable, 
There are several ways you can support us. Um, the easiest ones are just to like this video, leave a comment down below, and of course the best thing you could do for us is share it somewhere. Here we have the glorious common chickweed. Now, it is a absolutely brilliant plant for the novice forager for two or three reasons. Firstly, is the taste. It is actually very, very nice. It's like lettuce, but a bit more, a little bit more flavor, but it's an absolutely perfect salad green. If you're making salads, this is what to use. Another reason it's so great is it's available all year round. Like I say, we're in winter at the moment. You can find this almost anywhere. Now, in terms of key identifiers, there's one real giveaway. And if you look closely on the stem here, and I'll do the best job I can with it, you will find, as I spin it, there. Can you see there is a row of hairs? And as I turn it, they'll disappear. So it doesn't have hairs all around the stem. It has one row there. You see it come into camera there? And then it's gone again. Yeah. It has one row of hairs. And that really is like a gift to the forager because that's something that tells you, okay, got the right thing, can't be anything nasty. Um, another thing, it does have flowers. And it's got beautiful white petals and it looks like it's got 10 petals and even on very very close inspection with these tiny ones it looks like it's got 10 petals but when they're a bit bigger you'll see they're actually um, five little pairs of petals that are combined so there you go common chickweed let us know if there's anything in particular you'd like to see us do then uh, please do get in touch otherwise I'll see you on the next one thanks for watching cheers